hide herself with a smoke screen. This is produced by burning the oil in the boilers incompletely. Artificial fog made by chemicals from smoke boxes seals the gap between the funnel smoke and the sea. So thick is the smoke, literally, one could cut it with a knife. For offence, the destroyer depends on the torpedo, and here they are being prepared for running. The motive power is heated, compressed air. They are fired from tubes by the torpedo officer on the bridge. Fire what? Fire eight. And with a big flop, these one-ton weapons enter the water. In slow motion, the revolving propellers can be seen, also the wooden mark boy, which indicates the position where the torpedo was launched. The destroyer turns immediately she has fired and chases up the torpedo. At the end of its run, it will come to the surface and float. Sometimes, however, they don't rise, and then the fun begins. For these deadly weapons are valued at 2,000 pounds, and dragging operations are commenced. On sighting the torpedo, a boat is manned, and the ship stops while it is recovered. The warhead of a torpedo carries 500 pounds of high explosive, sufficient to blow up a building as large as that of Parliament House Canberra. But for practice, a collapsible head filled with water equal to the weight of the warhead is fitted. This head carries a calcium light which gives off smoke and thus indicates position of the torpedo. On getting alongside the ship, the tin fish is hoisted in, thoroughly cleaned, adjusted, greased, and launched back into the tube ready for further practice. A strong wind and choppy sea stops further practice and in rough weather, destroyer's decks are not the most comfortable to be walking about on. And we return to the quiet waters of the harbour, coming alongside the wharf in a faultless manner. <laughs>